relax. Colleen and Eric have a podcast. The world is scary and we're locked in our home. But now we have big microphones. So you can relax. That's the name of our podcast. Hello. Welcome to Relax, the podcast. I'm Colleen Ballinger. And I, according to Wikipedia and the state of California, am your husband. Oh, also, only the state of California, not anywhere else? It's only recognized in, in this state. Also, your sisters, I believe. People keep like messaging me on uh, my sister media is that like there's like if you Google like who who I'm married to, it says your sister. Really? Yeah. Huh. That's weird. You're not. I hope. I don't think so. She was the officiate for our wedding. Did she mess that up? Did she, she fill out the paperwork wrong? Are you married to my sister? She the paperwork wrong. Uh, Ask her about that. We should look into she that. She signed on the wrong line. <laughs> no, <laughs> she signed that Google she and I was so the officiate. Uh, hello, everyone. Welcome to the 10th episode of Relax. This is a big deal. Our 10th our episode. Tenth We're in double digits, episode. man. I know that is... We're in the double digits. We're almost a teenager. Oh, that's so cute. So we have a fun episode for you guys today. We wanted to say thank you to everyone who's been watching or listening or whatever you're doing to consume this podcast. Mm -hmm. We're so grateful for you. So this episode is all for you. And one of the most requested things that we have had ever is uh, for Eric to sing more. Truly. Well, that, are you not going to do what you want to relax this uh, week? I forgot. I got so excited about your new song. Oh, okay. So, yes. Okay. What are we going to relax? Blah, blah, blah. Like, okay. okay. You go first. You go first. Consistency. Sorry. Uh, I forgot. Well, okay. So, yes. How we start the podcast is, Eric, who needs to relax this week? Okay. This one, I'm going to really have to set the scene here. But, like, I had to leave the house this week. Mm-hmm. And I had to go to, to FedEx. Oh, yes. To send a package. And... I ran into uh, an anarchist. What? An a-, a complete anarchist. This. How do you? How are we married? Are, are we married? Are you married to my sister? How are we married? And you did not mention this to me. Well, uh, okay, maybe I was saving the story for now. Okay. But there's this thing that, as a society, mm-hmm. like we have decided that if there are in a place of business two registers, mm-hmm. both open. Mm-hmm. But only one line. Mm -hmm. There's only one. The one line signifies that we are all in this single line Mm -hmm. waiting for whichever register opens first. Does this make sense? Yes, 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 of course. And especially in COVID times, like there are in in this um, FedEx, Mm -hmm. there are big purple circles on the floor, like stickers on the floor. Like you stand here, six feet stand here. Like it's at this point, it's marcated. Mm -hmm. This is the singular line. Here are your purple circular stickers to stand on six feet away from each other. And then when you get to the front of the line, whichever register happens to be open at that time, you know, they're taking care of people as fast as they can, sending their packages all over the world. Okay. And, so I'm in a line with three people. Mm-hmm. I am at the front of the line, standing in my assigned purple s- circle sticker. Okay. Where's and this, this girl walks in, this woman. Okay. With her package that she's got to send to whoever. Ugh. And she just go and and the the way the line is is stickered is that you're kind of in front of just the one register, but there's two registers like working. They're they're magic, and she goes. And just walk, looks at us, three people waiting in line, and just walks past us and next to me in front of the second register. You know, they're both helping some people at this time. As if we don't, as if, as, as an anarchist, as an an, how do you not know? Because, how do you? Honestly, it's something I would do. It's something I would do. If I saw. Well, here's how you'd know, lovey. (laughs) Okay. It's because I'm not the type of person to say, Excuse me, miss. There's a line here. You did this? I'm not the type of person <gasps> to to point this out. But what I can do is an audible sigh. Oh, yeah. That, that is, is so your, informed. That's your jam. And you just, Love. like, the subtext in this audible sigh is, ma'am, you messed up. Did you do that? And so I go... <sighs> did she notice your audible sigh, Love? It's, and it's through, mind you, it's through not one, not not two... But three masks. Yeah. Because at first the CDC was like one mask, and I was like, eh, I think I'm gonna wear two. And now they're like, two masks is better. Well, people, I'm wearing yeah, you're I'm wearing three masks. He is. So through three masks, I 
surely she's going to recognize this sigh. Of course she didn't. She and doesn't resume care. her place at the back of the line no as way. society has dictated. But no, of course not. And the the set you know of the two registers, they the first register finishes its particular customer, and she walks right up there. Now this sigh by me was so great that even. Ahead of the woman, the person, the woman working the register noticed the sigh and was like, there's no way I, I'm going to start a riot if I take this woman now. So she says, miss, I'm sorry, but I think he was next and indicated to the line of now four people standing mm -hmm. on their purple circles to which this, this woman replies, oh, tch, with her own kind of breathy sigh. I didn't know there was a line. You knew there was a line. Love of course it. there was a line. <laughs> That's so ridiculous. You get so upset. Get to the back of the line. the funniest things. I mean, I do too, which is why I love us, but like... But of course, in that moment, I'm so awkward. I played it too. Well, you you can help her. Oh, no, yeah, yeah I'll just Of course go. you did. You, like, you I, like this, I still have had to play angry, it off. Your angry, passive aggressive like, sigh, but like, you still are like, oh no, it's fine. You go. Oh, no, after. it's fine. It's fine. You go. Oh, no. And then there was this the kind of awkward dance to where it's like, did I you then, go? And then I went. Yeah, for sure I went. Yeah. Did she have to go to the back of the line? Yes. So she needs to relax. A absolutely she does in her defense i would have done the same thing if i saw two registers and there was one line in front of one register oh, and no line crazy. in front of the other i'd be like why are all these idiots in line when there's no line on this side that's what we i would are done. an evolved species mm -hmm. it's it's easily i think recognize this is not the first time this has happened to me okay do you understand like if there's two registers and we're all forming one line and we've decided that as a society get in one why, line but why not? don't just like walk and whoa, 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 all these people like made a line i'm just going to ignore that like, maybe she didn't notice. there's a certain type of person that i would notice it. and if that's you Stop you're saying you're saying you didn't just, notice yeah but even i thought so, this was purposeful why be angry about it and do your angry side to the point where you're still talking about i hadn't been in public later. in so long and i was only in public for like five to ten minutes and i feel like i need i needed to remember what it was like to just generally hate other people that are strangers yeah. for very minute oh my reasons. God. Like, well, why didn't? What? Why not just be like, "Oh, excuse me, there's a line." Like, why is that so hard? I thought I was saying You'd that in the sigh. No, there's. Oh God, there's no words in size. That's just passive aggressive. Well, I think there's. It's all. You could it's just all in the eyes. I probably wouldn't have even noticed the she was there. I would have been like, oh, I wouldn't have even noticed someone cut the line. That's where my brain is at when I'm doing things. Not me. Um, that was very intense. <laughs> no, you just wrote an audible novel, I think, about your experience at the post office. I feel like someone listening is like, they're listening in earbuds and this is happening to them right now. And they're going to. No. This is going to inspire them to like. No one gets that mad about. I mean, it's fine. I, I love you. I appreciate you. I'm sorry you had to go through that. Anarchy. You know who I think needs to relax? Who's Whoa, shots. Before. You're calling out someone by name? Yes. I, he upsets me a lot. And I know this podcast is coming out um, much later. We record these podcasts many days in advance. Um, so this, Sometimes, it depends. It depends on the week and, and this week. We're recording it um, pretty far in advance. So it's it'll have been a few days since all of the drama. But... Yeah, what's the point of that guy? Man, Does anybody he want to hear really what he has to say or any of his do. opinions? I don't think that... Some people do, and that's totally fair and fine. If people want to hear his opinions, that's fair. He's allowed to have opinions, and people are allowed to want to hear his opinions. What I don't like Who is how it? he he preaches about this, like... Oh, basically, if anyone doesn't know what I'm talking about, Meghan Markle went on, um, did a Oprah interview, which I don't know how you would know about this, but um, she talked about her experience kind of with the royal family and and basically he went on air and was like she's a liar she didn't have dark thoughts and she she doesn't struggle with mental illness and he basically like proved her point like yeah, as and, far as like the media is concerned right and uh, he said and no one's racist and she made all that up and no one's racist against her like he just like was awful and um I oh sorry I just sniffed I'm so insecure about it now <laughs> I just sniffed into the mic <laughs> um anyway I I've always felt like He's always rubbed me the wrong way. He's always, he's so sexist in everything he says. He comes after women all the time and shames them for being secure or confident in their bodies. I don't know shames much about makes, him oh, other horrible. than just seeing he's people so being awful. really upset about some dumb thing he said. I'm like, why does anybody 
care. Well, here's what I was going to say, though, is that I think he needs to relax because I just think it's so funny that his entire like career, as long as I've known who he is, which I know his career has been much longer, but in the recent years, he's always pops up in the news cycle when he's being awful to like women. Um, but he his everything I've ever seen of him is him bullying people, like bullying and being mean and giving unasked yeah, for opinions this- unasked for opinions on like women and what they're going through and all of that and he stormed out and quit his job did you know about this he quit his job because some, yeah. because they called him out they were like yeah, he, you yeah. can't do this you can't you can't say someone he got up and walked it doesn't away, yeah. isn't have isn't experiencing racism when you're not them you're not experiencing their experience you can't say she's not struggling with mental illness you don't know so you can't say that. And what? and he was like, I'm not dealing with this. Like he like he was so offended. And because someone had a different opinion than him, he was like, I'm out of here. But his argument has always been, well, what? I just have a different opinion than you. Doesn't mean I'm bullying or being bad or mean. It just anyway, I don't want to get too into it. I've, I don't think I've ever called out someone specifically like that and just been like so upset by it. But yeah, but. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, he sucks. Uh, it's funny. It's funny that you said that. Yeah, yeah I saw him walk on that off that his show and then was fired or quit or left that show and then i saw a headline that was like breaks his silence on, on his like, silence yeah and i was like it's been a day like stop giving this guy like a place to speak well right and i saw what he posted and it was like something about freedom of speech and being able to voice your opinion and i'm like well but that that doesn't you're such a hypocrite because you're mad that you voiced your opinion and then someone else voiced their opinion and it was different than yours so like he left because someone else was like arguing him on his opinion yeah. and he was like he seems to me like someone who wants people to be upset by him and I talk about too, him yeah. so like it's like i don't even like yeah yes he should uh absolutely relax but like it's like he needs to relax what like a waste of breath because yes uh, sir beep his name out when you after when you post this just okay. just beep his name out because like it's not even worth like the like our Breath. Okay, I will. But anyway, it's it's not that big of a deal. It was just like the first thing I was just reading about it before we started recording. So that was the first thing that came to my mind. Where I was like, who needs to relax? He needs to relax. You're allowed to have your opinion and like think whatever you want to think. Fine. But like if someone else is, has a different opinion than you, you can't throw a fit and be like, well, I'm allowed to have a different opinion than you, but you can't have a different opinion than me. It was so his like it was so weird. Anyway, it reminds me of a conversation we had about ranch dressing but love do not get me started on the <laughs> ranch what day dressing. the week starts not gonna yeah i'm not bringing that up. the week starts we've settled the week thing okay i still get tweets about it tiktoks sent to me about it we've settled the week the, here's the deal is historically it starts on sunday but ev- most everyone recognizes monday is the first day of the week now but historically it is sunday i'm just saying so we're both correct we are technically if this were a both Zoom correct. call, I would just be putting myself on mute right now mm-hmm. and just waiting until you've you've finished mm-hmm. whatever you need to say, mm-hmm. and then I'll unmute when we're and talking about something a, else. An exasperated sigh to, and that I'm supposed to know what it means. It might be an eye roll involved with the <laughs> sigh. <laughs> okay. Anyway, we do have um, something very exciting. So, uh, Eric, I almost called you Flynn. Um, same thing, Eric. What? Uh, you, you and same Flynn are thing? very. You guys are look exactly the same. Um, Eric wrote a song, two podcasts, not last podcast, but the one before, based on the comments and reviews from Apple Podcasts, and <clears throat> apparently, he's done it again. So we're gonna we're gonna get to I that. Have. I'm very I'm yeah. Very, this is a I'm very this is a hard one to do. But like I, I said, I would do it again. I wanted to do it again, but it was to to go back through the Apple Podcast reviews mm-hmm. and use them to, uh, as lyrics mm-hmm. for a song. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was hard this time, but. I did do it again. So we're going to hear that in one second. But first, I want to say thank you to our first sponsor, which is Homer. We've talked about Homer before. They're wonderful. And we're excited to talk about them again. Not Homer Simpson, love. Come on. You know what it is. Homer is amazing. Homer is the essential early learning program for kids ages two to eight. Homer takes kids on a learning journey personalized to their age, interests, and learning level, boosting their confidence and growing with them as they build skills for school and life. There are two engaging ways to learn using Homer. One is the Homer Learn and Grow app. And then there's also the Homer Explore Kits, which gives kids a more hands-on learning approach. 
obviously everyone is needed to adjust to this crazy pandemic we're all experiencing and a lot of families have had to homeschool. And I know that we are always looking for new exciting ways to help Flynn learn now that we are stuck at home. And Homer is one of the many things that we have turned to. It's great. So it's personalized to each individual kid and their interests, which is my favorite way to approach when helping kids learn because that's how I always learned best is hands-on learning, um, being active, you know, physically doing things as opposed to just reading uh, or having someone talk at you. So I really, really love that. It's comprehensive. It's research backed. It builds confidence. And best of all, it's safe and it's easy to use. The Homer Learn and Grow app is proven to increase reading scores by 74% with just 15 minutes per day. If you have multiple kids, don't worry. You can have up to four personalized profiles for your different kids because obviously every child has different skills and interests that Homer can cater to. We love the Explore Kits because hands-on play, like I said, is our favorite way to teach Flynn and they're full of really fun activities and games that we love to use. It's awesome. So if you guys want to check out Homer, you can visit learnwithhomer.com slash relax to start a free 60-day trial. That is learnwithhomer.com slash relax and try out a 60 day trial free two months check it out it's awesome learning is fun and you can make learning fun with children if you like yeah anyway at home with homer Mm -hmm. i always say exactly so um apparently apparently eric has a song he's gonna sing for us I'm very excited about this one because I was like, I think you can up it. I think you can find even better comments. I I, I thought I could find better comments and I wanted to do like, so I'm, so I'm going uh, to the Apple podcast review section where you can give us five stars and leave a review because the, the, um, apparently that helps the podcast in, mm-hmm. in some way. Uh, and, and this time it was harder because I was like, you know what? Uh, it's, it's hard to sometimes read reviews about something that like you're trying to just do for fun and uh, be creative, it, but and it's hard to take criticism sometimes. You yeah. Know? Mm-hmm. Um, even if it's constructive criticism, uh, you know, like going through all that. But so it, it's it was personal. Like you guys were great. You had some great suggestions for the podcast. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, I tried to like incorporate some of those reviews into another song. Cause it's so fun for me to right. I love to do it. I'll do it. I'll do it again. So leave leave uh, reviews. Hopefully five stars because you like the podcast. <laughs> on, well, I'm excited to hear you it. Listen to it. Um, but yeah, should I play it? Yes, let's oh. hear it. Mm. I like it already, lovey. Eric has a sexy voice. <laughs> Easy to listen to Eric's sexy voice Sounds like he'd be great At dirty talk Yeah <laughs> Girl so Eric's voice soothes my soul Even when he Don't finish His sentence It's like You know what I mean It's like you know what I mean It's like you get what I mean Girl I listen to this on my work commute at the gym in the shower. Oh my god! Folding laundry, girl. If I was there, I'd be folding you in your laundry too. Lovely. All of these reviews, they gave me five stars. One, two, three, four, uh, five. All of these reviews. They gave me five stars, and that's a full hand. Mm-hmm. Oh my god! All of these reviews said I'm sexy. Oh my god! Five stars. These aren't real, are they? They're very real. No, they're not. <laughs> these are real reviews. Yes. Oh my god. Can we please have some more Eric singing content? I got your content. Ooh. <laughs> Not gonna lie, Eric's song is bomb AF. I can't, it's a 10 out of 10. And 10 is better than five because it's two fives. And that's double hands, yeah. <laughs> All of these reviews, they give me five stars. One, two, three, four, oh, five. five. Only one review gave us one star. Oh. But it didn't mention me. Said only one review gave us one star and the reason why Colleen is you oh my god it's your 
fall. How embarrassing. Come on. So thanks those for that constructive are, criticism, guys. We'll try real. and do uh, do better. Those are not real. They're absolutely the people have spoken love. Are these them? These are these are yeah. That's a real review, the reason why Colleen yeah, when was you one edit it, star. When you edit it, put it on the Are screen. you kidding me? You're such a wiener. <laughs> that was a really good song, though. Like, legit. Like, I loved that. I, I did not like the fact that the only one review that was bad was about me. It's pretty, so. it's pretty, uh, pretty, pretty horny there in the review. Lovey. I've never so, heard you talk dirty like that. That was like, what was that? Did you like it? I mean, not in this context, but like. Uh, Wow. Oh my god. I can't believe these are real this reviews. Is, this is just a, overwhelmingly, this is just what they they had to say. This was the feedback. Uh oh my god, which, that is which was great and well, made thanks. for uh some fun songwriting. Oh uh so if you'd like to be a part of the next uh why don't I keep doing this? It's honestly really <laughs> no, okay. Fun for well, me, next so time... I'm gonna keep doing this. So so go on Apple it's the purple button on your iPhone, hit that, go to our podcast, leave a five star review. Oh my god! Clearly, I need to be involved in the songwriting process next time. Ten out of ten. I can't let this continue to happen. So uh, I, I'm fine with you writing songs, but not if are you going to do the about... next one? No, I'm not doing the next one. <sighs> I'm just saying, like, if you're just going to pick songs that say "You're sexy" and "I suck," I didn't. No, I literally that was just. Uh, I this just, is all you could find. I didn't have to search. Like it was you're just such it was just a one after another. <laughs> <laughs> Love you. Um, I do want to point something out. Last week, Eric was in a suit, and we haven't discussed this yet. What? I'm not making fun of you, but I am curious why you're what wearing you a mock turtleneck. About? I've never seen this shirt in my life. I've. Where did this? You've never come seen from? it because I've never worn it. Who wears I mock bought, I think I bought it towards the beginning. Again, I bought it towards the beginning of corn. I don't know. I find that this podcast <laughs> has become a place where I can explore fashion. Take risks. An audio medium is yes. where you can explore of fashion. Of course, yes. This is this is my place. I, I have only been wearing sweatpants and hoodies for I know. a year. Mostly that say your name on it. Right. Because it's your merch. <laughs> so right. A lot of that. I know. Um, and so, like, I think this is my chance, yeah, to take risks, ex- explore my... Uh, I can vouch for this. Fashion... No joke. Am I an icon? What, how do people, uh, do people? Okay. Can people say that they're well, their own I, icon? Well, it seems as though your reviews are making my husband very cocky. Oh no. Well, um, I will say this. I. It's an uncomfortable feeling. Yeah. Are around you, the throat area. I could a mock never. turtleneck. Um. Even even with a mock, not even a full. Yeah. Turtleneck. It's. Where did I'm you not get this? Used to uh, the internet. I'm I'm not used to. Um, did you buy this for the podcast? No, no, no. no like I, I said. 60 seconds ago, oh, I, bought it, I bought it towards the beginning of quarantine. <laughs> I don't know. I kind of feel like that's a lie. Audio I feel like medium, you bought it you're not even this. listening to me. No, I am. I just feel like that's a lie. Well, here's the thing. It's, it's like, not. It's not. It's literally been We did um, a photo shoot with our son. When we were actually doing the photo shoot for this podcast, yeah. we also had black mock turtlenecks that we put on and did a really funny photo shoot with our son. And we took those pictures for 10 minutes and I was like dying to get it all. I can't stand the feeling of turtlenecks. So I cannot believe you're wearing that right now. I even just choked as I tried to respond. He, to I you. just watched him try to <laughs> swallow <laughs> spit, and he couldn't do it because the turtleneck on the, the way. Because I had the thought of like, yeah, it's uh, also I have a, I don't know, if, um, do women have this? Because we have a men as men, we have Adam's apples. Like, yeah, so girls don't have that. I have like a, uh, as far as I, know. I think like an instinctual fear that like, uh, if I were a like a a caveman or a cave person, like mm-hmm. to get hit there, like I know that that's a very vulnerable part of my body. I would die. You know what I mean? So like instinctually, like you protect. You know, like that's mm-hmm. why people like slouch or whatever or like this like when something happens you go like this like automatically because instinctually you know to protect your throat really yeah i don't know if that's true i think I'm, you made I'm, that up you didn't know i'm a scientist <laughs> uh, i mean i know you're a scientist but like um so, but so i but i have my own i feel like overtly like like sensitive like uh thoughts i just i i have lots of fears of trauma to my throat mm-hmm. I'm very nervous about yeah. any throat happenings to me. I actually love this topic. Can we sit on this for a second? I love people's sit on irrational- whatever you want. Lovey, this song. <laughs> your guys' reviews got my husband all like. In- okay, listen. My bra- 
bright red. You are. But also, <laughs> I think I am too. Um, no, I love this topic. Actually, this was not part of the plan, but I do want to talk about this for a minute. Talk about throw I, stuff. No, love. What are you talking? About? Stop. <laughs> well, how was that? Come throat on. stuff is like a, please. That's not like a. That's not a category on the internet. Throat Everything's stuff. a oh, category on the internet. Yeah. First of all, second of all, um, I love hearing about people's irrational fears. I have a very strange one. I feel like you have quite a lot, but I love like my very absurd irrational fear is um, if I'm walking down a busy street. So this was very hard for me when I lived in New York City. I, I've told you about this before. I am so terrified if someone is smoking a cigarette that as they walk past me, they will put the cigarette out on my arm, like on my skin, on my arm. I don't for no reason. This has never happened to me. I have no reason to believe this. I've never seen this happen in a movie like I don't know why. They're going to put it on purpose. Not, on purpose. not like accidentally. No, on purpose. Not like at Coachella, you're in the crowd, they bump no. into you with their cigarette lit, but like I, on I, purpose, they're yes. like going to like yes. cinch it out on you. And as I'm walking, it's always like if I'm walking on a sidewalk, if I see people smoking a cigarette, I will like purposefully like do a big you horseshoe they're around them. Their... Yes, I don't know why. It's a you total think irrational of stupid thing. You ashtray? I guess so. This is my <laughs> opinion of myself. But like that to me, I'm not saying it's an irrational fear to want to like, hold your Adam, keep, protect your Adam's apple. Like, I'm sure that's if I'm not a man, I don't know what that would be like, but it's like a weird, but I know what an Adam's apple is. Well, isn't it your larynx? Like I have one. Am I wrong? It's your larynx. I think it's your larynx, which oh, you have to keep down. Okay. What? Well, I don't know. I, I learned about Maybe this. We should in, like, like pause this school. to Google larynx. No, I know what a larynx is because I went to school for it. Like I went to school went for to school singing. for larynx. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, have a, I have a bachelor's degree in larynx. Then you explain to me what it is. Uh, um, well, it's, no, it's I know. cartilage. Yeah, bone. your larynx oh, we're idiots. is, um, no, it's the voice box. It's an organ in the top of the neck involved in breathing, producing sound, and protecting the trachea against food aspiration. So I know about this because when, when in school for singing, you have to like, it's important to try to keep your larynx down when you're singing to get the most open, full sound. And so yeah. we'd always have to feel, make sure it was down. And I thought it was the same thing as an Adam's apple. So larynx, um, is it an Adam's apple? I'm looking it up. Um, when the larynx grows larger during puberty, it sticks out at the front of the throat. This is what's called an Adam's apple. So I was right. It's your larynx is your Adam's apple. But for many, well, you went to college up. for it. Of course. Yeah, you I have were. a bachelor in larynx, yeah. just in larynx. <laughs> um, but yeah, anyway, sorry. Where does your fear come from? Well, there's that. But I also I saw an episode of MacGyver when I was a kid. And mm -hmm. if you don't know what MacGyver is. I do is, because my dad loved it. Yeah. So there was an episode of MacGyver when I was a child that was on like daytime TV when I was very little, uh, like probably like four or five. And the, a guy gets hit in the throat and his, his Adam's apple or larynx mm -hmm. is crushed. And so MacGyver's like, I know what to do. Give me a, a big pen you know, a ballpoint pen mm -hmm. and he bites the you know, cap off. So it's just like the tube of the mm -hmm. pen and he takes his pocket knife and he cuts <gasps> a, a hole in the man's throat. Cause Ew. the man couldn't breathe cause his Adam's apple was I crushed and he cuts a hole right here. And then he sticks the pen tube through the hole so that the, cause then you can breathe cause you're breathing through the hole here, which is, I, I, I think this is a medical procedure when heck? this happens to people, but seeing this episode of, daytime television as a child has made me very sensitive so now it's scarred you forever yeah so now so i guess i'm walking down the street and any if i walk past somebody i'm just thinking they're just gonna hit me in the throat Ugh. you're thinking they're gonna put their cigarette out on you well do you have any irrational we fears just, we should just stay inside yeah We're i know literally well, we do yeah but do you have any other irrational fears a any other ones yeah because i feel like that's probably a common one i am men a person with riddled with anxiety i'm almost I know. afraid Everything of almost is. anything yeah i don't like uh, yeah you, your life well, is I just, irrational it, Well, fear. that just means that I'm manifesting in the future. Like I'm like, well, not manifesting. I'm like, I'm like thinking about how anything and everything could go wrong. Mm -hmm. or like almost always. So like, uh, right. that seems like a pretty irrational fears. I know, but I feel like I know there's one that you have. I can't think of it now that like you've told me before. That's so irrational and insane. And I have lots of them. I'm sure there's so many more that, of mine that are at least, like, so wackadoo. Flynn right now is afraid of alligators and we don't know why. Well, it's because your mother has a giant, very lifelike looking rubber that I think was a childhood toy of yours. Yes. Alligator, I red eyes, mouth open, teeth, just in her backyard always. You think this is what did it? Maybe, yeah, I guess it's so. It's just always in her backyard. It's like part of the uh, yeah. accoutrement of her backyard. We played backyard. with it when we were little kids. And um, we were there a couple of weeks ago. And now since then, any room he walks into that in our house, that's dark, he goes, 
Oh, baby scared alligator in there. Yeah, What's it's that? so sad. So I don't know why, but he's scared mm-hmm. of alligators and he's never seen a real alligator. His imagination is like wild amazing. and so amazing and wild at this point that like he's always kind of playing some sort of like scene almost. Like you can, doing yeah. a bit. Like, he'll be really talking funny. to you. Like you'll be like, oh, what'd you do today? And he'll be like, oh, I'll tell you went to the park or something. And then all of a sudden he'll just be like, and he'll turn into a bulldozer. And then all of a sudden he'll be a digger and then he'll be, you know, Flynn again. And then he'll be, you know, he's always turning into different things and he's just got the coolest imagination ever. It's so much freaking fun. I took him for a walk to a park by us that has lots of gopher holes that you can sometimes see gopher heads popping mm-hmm. out of. And he, I caught him ex- like in his own private moment explaining to a gopher why he couldn't have a Starbucks coffee. <laughs> that it was only for babies <laughs> but and he, for dadas. And he was like, sorry, gopher. Sorry, gopher. No baby coffee for you. Yeah. <laughs> He's so funny. <laughs> He's, a two-year-old. He's so great. Um, anyway, I want to take a moment to talk about our very next sponsor for the day, which is ExpressVPN. We've talked about them before, guys, and I'm excited to talk about them again. Does it make sense that the same company who controls half of online retail also passively eavesdrops on your private conversations at home? What about the idea that a single company controls 90% of internet searches, runs your email service, and gets to track everything you do on your smartphone? Big tech is more powerful than most countries are, and they profit by exploiting your personal data. If you want to put a layer of protection between your online activity and these tech juggernauts, then you should check out ExpressVP. VPN. Have we joined QAnon? What's happening? <laughs> <laughs> Who wrote this? VPN. Who's writing your ad copy? Like, we're now <laughs> conspiracy theorists. But, like, no, honestly, I though. Think it's great. No, no but honestly, oh, it is on. great. If there's anyone who, like, doesn't want people to know what I'm looking at on their phone, it's me. He has post it notes on every camera of any tech. Like, his, his computer the stickers has a, over stickers the camera over holes. all the camera holes on everything. He's That's so not paranoid. True. Just and my... you use this. You've used ExpressVPN before. I do know. We I, were I, I actively use it. I know. I just thought it was funny You're the way so it came funny. out. so funny. Anyway, think about how much of your life is on the internet. Sadly, every site you visit, video you watch, or message you send gets trapped tracked and data mined. But when you run ExpressVPN on your device, the software hides your IP address, something big tech can use to personally identify you. So ExpressVPN makes your activity harder to trace and sell to advertisers. ExpressVPN also encrypts 100% of your internet data to keep you safe from hackers and eavesdroppers on your network. And ExpressVPN does all of this without slowing your connection. That's why it's rated the number one VPN service by CNET and Wired. What we like most about ExpressVPN VPN is how easy it is to use. You just download the app on your phone or your computer, you tap one button and you're protected. Like I said, we use it. We've been using it for many years before we were ever sponsored by them because my husband is terrified that everyone is listening to him and stealing all his information. Also, he wanted to watch um, TV shows in other countries. (laughs) So stop handing over your personal data to the big tech monopoly that mines your activity and sells your information. Protect yourself with the VPN I trust to keep me safe on Online. Visit expressvpn.com slash relax. That's E X P R E S S V P N dot com slash relax to get three extra months free. Go to expressvpn.com slash relax right now to learn more. So, guys, this next little portion of our podcast, I'm very stoked on because it is the 10th episode and obviously you guys really loved um when, 10th anniversary i know you guys loved when eric did his song but it got me thinking like you also like whenever you guys bring up really great questions and topics for us online so i thought for the rest of the episode i'm just going to go to you i'm going to let you guys run the entire the entirety of this episode and we're only going to talk about and do things that you have requested on the internet so i've gone to twitter and i have lots of fun things for us to discuss and do i just hit my microphone i hope that didn't hurt anyone's earballs all right here we go you ready lovey I have lots of fun things from the Twitter. By the way, if you're not following us, you can go to relax underscore podcast. That's our Twitter handle. This, so this, wait, you're just going to go through uh, things people... Tons of things. There's questions, there's uh-huh. suggestions, there's silly topics, there's serious topics. It's a lot of different things. Um, okay, and the first thing go. I wanted to do was Eric... Eric Kaka, oh my gosh, I just said a bad word, um, said, this is not a question, but I think it would be fun for you guys to play Never Have I Ever or Who's Most Likely To. So I got a bunch of who's... Eric Kaka, was that your editorial choice or did they, they, they wrote my That's, name as Eric Kaka. Well, it's not your name. That's, you're not the only human with that name. It's just... Oh, that's their like, uh, It's Erica. This, her name is Erica. Uh-huh. And so her, her, 
name on Twitter is Ericaca. Oh, I thought you were calling me Eric. <laughs> and I was no, like, but, I didn't know how to, to, maybe to take it. I was I like, is this our new? Maybe it is. Is this your new pet name? For so me? Oh. I thought this would be fun to do the who's more likely to game with us. So I've just written down like who's a handful. Who's more likely to? Uh, yeah. I didn't know that was. A, is that a game? Yeah. It's like you just okay. so usually like we would both have like um, a paper that says one or the other person's name. But since but this is a, that. You're listening, we're just going to say. Uh Who we think. So I'm going to say who's more likely to blank. And then we both on the count of three or something, we'll just have to say what, who we think. Just mime the count of three and not actually. Okay. Relax. All right, here we go. Who's more likely to forget an anniversary? You. Both of us. Me. When is our anniversary? Exactly. Honestly, I struggle to think of the month. We were literally November. Yeah. By the way, one of yes i think so i literally don't know what day it was okay November, listen uh, 18th Does was that it? sound right no that does not sound right when's uh i think it was much earlier in the month i don't know but listen i i will i'm going to address this too there was so many i'd say the majority of the requests on twitter were um talk about your relationship how it started and your love story and all that and we, oh, we will don't remember <laughs> we we will i think it might be funny to dedicate a podcast episode to that because i don't remember anything and also we never had like an official like first date where this is happening it was like we were friends and then slowly became more and then okay. like became more real fast and so when it was no- happening i'm pretty sure i knew it was happening well, I knew it was happening, but I'm just saying, like, do you know dates? I don't. But anyway, well, this is this no. is why this needs to be an episode, because I think it would be funny for us to try to remember all this. So That's that will funny. come. So just so you know, everyone was asking that and we'll get to that. OK, anyway, who's more likely to cook a romantic dinner? Me. You. Yeah, I was going to say you, too. But you you are the better cook. Uh, like I think you're a great that's, cook. That's I'm not saying I'm terrible, like um, but you are the better cook. I but I'm I think I'm more likely to like uh make the meat in a shape of a heart yes like literally two nights ago he i was editing and he made me cookies from scratch which i didn't even know you knew how to do and he it's on the back of the bag of chocolate chips if anybody's looking for it that's the best one i think i do too that's what i use and he he put them in the um shape of a heart wait did Uh you call your mom and ask her i had before Okay. That's how I knew that that was the recipe. Well, he put the cookies in the shape of a heart. And I remember like back when we first started dating. So I do remember this. I was, I went to your apartment for a date Uh and I think it was like one of our first dates and you cooked me dinner Mm -hmm. and it was so cute. You made like steak and like put like It was a Tuesday in March. Was it? No, I don't know. See, yeah, we don't remember. Like literally don't know. But you had this cute little apartment and like, um, And there was, you had this like little tiny bench in your small little kitchen. It was so cute. It was like the coolest, like decorated place. Did you use spaghetti? No. Spaghetti, right? No, you made me steak. Spaghetti and steak. There was no spaghetti. Was there spaghetti? No. You just made steak. (laughs) I don't remember what else you made. Did (laughs) you make spaghetti? point that we don't remember anything. I don't think you did, love. I made you steak? Yes, you made steak. Because I remember you put like parmesan cheese chips on top of the steak and i remember oh, you called yeah. your brother and like asked your brother oh, how to right. cook steak because his brother my, yeah is a uh, chef one of my brothers is a is a chef and a very good chef in a french restaurant yeah. anyway eric is more likely to cook a romantic dinner but i'm more likely to cook dinner but neither of us remember it yeah <laughs> <laughs> who's more likely to buy the other person a gift they hate me you well yeah <laughs> I'm more like I I buy you gifts, but I feel like I never get you good ones because you have such specific taste. For example, you are wearing a mock turtleneck right now. I never would have bought that for you. I'm taking I'm taking risks here, love. I'm but putting guess, myself out there. You know there. what though? You found. I'm it. trying. I could fail. You found a it gift that I got for you today. Yeah, that was a good gift. I okay. So I um for Christmas got him a bunch of presents, and one of the presents I hid because I didn't want him to find it, and then I forgot that I hid it. So today he was cleaning was up, funny. and he pulled a book out of um the cupboard that was a cookbook on like the Sopranos. He loves the TV like show. Like a the hidden Sopranos. cupboard that we would never open for yeah. any circumstance, and I was just hiding all of Flynn has so many trucks now. I was just like, where can I where can I bury all these trucks just to get 
there's so many. You know, so he opened a up a cupboard and he found this cookbook. Opened up a random cover that we never go in, and there was just this Sopranos TV show cookbook in there. He's like, like, what is vintage this vintage out of print book? I'm like, why did what is? I was so and confused. I was like, oh, that's it. I got you that for Christmas. He's like, yeah. thank you. So, um, I you liked that thank gift? You. Yeah. Who's more likely to get jealous? I'd say you. Me? Yeah. I'm not like that. I mean, come on, I'm not that chill. You're not, not like, that. No, we're pretty chill as a couple, but like, I feel like you're more likely to get jealous than I am. Give me an example. Oh, come on. I don't want to get into this. Oh, now it's getting real. Like, what I feel- <laughs> voice just happened out of your, out of your I feel like- larynx? Like, what just happened to your larynx? That, like, you started talking like an insane person. I feel like you'll what be like. What was that? I feel like you'll be like, you'll ask me and I'm not trying to out you or anything. I think it's sweet. I love you. But you will be like, are you talking to anyone else? Will you ever like, like anyone else? Will you ever be with anyone else? I am else? not like that. Yes, you do ask me that. And I'm like, what are you talking about? No way. I, I certainly, I'm not like that. I'm not like, oh, you do like someone else. Like, we don't, I you. like I'm not like that at all. No, I, just, I would never. I need to point this out. What? <laughs> This is this is why I don't trust you. You have to explain to people listening. Who, who, like, why do I trust someone with this? Listen on their back. You, everyone listening. He just pulled <laughs> the largest clump of cat hair I've ever seen in my life off of my back. Like it was disgusting. Like a huge clump of cat hair. I think we're both very chill. If we had to pick someone who was jealous, yeah, would, yeah. it would be. Hey. <laughs> if no, we I've had s- to, you know what's funny is I've seen you get jealous, and you're so subtle about it. And when you get jealous, I'm like, yeah, I want to like, yeah. like I want to like, I, like, I like, I almost want to like encourage it. I almost want to be like, yeah, I don't know. Maybe you should be nervous. Wait, when did I like, get jealous? I, Tell me. I'm, not I don't want to give like, I, again, I don't want to give it a, s- a specific example, but like when you've gotten a little jealous, I'm like, I like want to bathe in it. I want to like rub it all over myself. I love it so much. Well, no, I don't think either one of us are jealous I saw people. you when I was playing that song. And reading mm-hmm. all these reviews, like, well, I don't think we get jealous because we we are very like secure in our relationship. We trust each other a hundred percent, and we're very like we're very. I feel like we're so solid. It's just uh, if I had to, like, if you were forcing me to pick one of us to say one of us is the jealous one, I would say you're more jealous than me, but not by a lot because you're not really jealous. You know what I'm saying? Do it. What? I was, I was what's to, happening? I was like trying to do something jealous. I was that like, was, what's it? What's it? Was that that your thought about <laughs> what is jealousy is grabbing my wrist aggressively and saying, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, That's what like, you think jealous I, is? Yeah. In that moment, I was like, how do I play up jealousy? And it was, uh, I think, abuse. Okay. Anyway, moving forward, who is more likely to say, I love you first? Did you? I think you did. Nope. I th- did I? I think I did first, but I, f- I did it in one of those ways where I was like, I'm thinking I'm thinking something. I want to say it. Oh, like, yeah. Yeah. That was cute, that though. What, that's, yeah, it was super cute. It was cute. Um, did you say first? You said it first. You said it first. And then I said it right after. But you said it like, blah, 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 like that. You, you like, so didn't fast. even let me finish. I was like, I love you. No, I love you. Yeah. yeah. It was pretty. But uh, yeah, I guess so we both are. Okay. Who's more likely to write a song for their partner? I'd say me. You have written me a bunch of songs I've that no one's ever heard. I've written a lot of songs, yeah. Do they know about your... Uh, no. Do but your he, peoples know? He wrote a song first, technically. It wasn't for me, though. It was for Miranda. You wrote a song... Oh, yeah. For, like, if we were to ever do a musical episode of, I, of yeah. Haters, he was like, you should... If we ever did it... So it wasn't for Can me. Can I tell this story? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's not like a story. Yeah. But, like, I, I got very excited, like... With the idea if that if there was a season three of mm-hmm. haters that there should be a musical episode like of course there should mm-hmm. like it was, just seemed like a no brainer to me and I got like a very excited about the idea of like well what would um because obviously I like to write little things I don't mm-hmm. know um so I was like very excited to, like what would Patrick it's so sing cute. to like Miranda and so I I wrote a little like I was just like oh like for some reason that idea was like in my brain and so like I wrote a little. It's so good. A minute and a half, two minute song and was like, hey, if, if we get a season three, you need to do a musical episode and like. Here's a song Patrick might sing. And yeah. it, it's so good. I remember he just sent me this like voice memo of him singing it like on the uke. And I listened to it a hundred times. Did like, you I, really? I did. I loved it. But yeah, I've written Eric a lot of little, I wouldn't call them songs. They're little ditties. 
I've written you little ditties. But when we've like been apart because of your tours and stuff, mm-hmm. like I've been like surprised to like wake up in the morning and then see that you've texted me like mm-hmm. a video of a full song that you had written me in the middle of the night in a hotel <laughs> at four in the morning, mm-hmm. and they're and they're always amazing and great. And uh, we're gonna play one for you right now. No, we're not. Yeah, no, so we're not. I wrote tape. him. I wrote him one. The most recent one I wrote him was an apology song. <laughs> Wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. I like I had I was um pregnant and I'm not now, but I was pregnant. And I didn't know that I was, but I was so emotional. I kept just having meltdowns and like I so I was having all these hormones and I was like, what's going on with me? I'm so emotional. And so you're the only person I'm around other than Flynn. And so it came out at you. And so then I wrote him a song before I was pregnant. Um, just like apologizing. And I think one of the lyrics is like, I'm sorry, I'm a butt or something. Like <laughs> yeah, that. No. I don't remember it, but um, look at us. We're so cute. This uh, is no, cute. but I wrote him this. I was like, I wrote you a song on the ukulele because I'm sorry I was being in a bad mood. And, um, and so, yeah. How and awesome then, is that though to get from your. And then I partner. found out I was pregnant a couple days later. So, next one is <laughs> who's more likely? To, I will get to more questions soon, I promise, but these are just fun for me. Who's more likely to complain? Mr. Stucklin. Yes. Mr. Stucklin is most likely to complain about everything. Mr. Stucklin loves to complain. He's a complaining man. Oh, oh look oh, here, Ryan. Okay. Changing keys. Where are we in G? You can do whatever you want. Oh, my camera died. That's, oh. Perfect timing. <laughs> my camera just died, which is great because Eric was about to try to make me write a song on the spot. <laughs> no. So now I have to pause the podcast no. to restart the camera. Damn. So Almost got her no to sing. song. Almost for got you. her to sing. Alrighty, who is more likely to get arrested? Obviously, it's Eric. Who's more likely to go skinny dipping? I would say you. You have a great skinny dipping story. What? You told me once about like skinny dipping somewhere. Some, something. Mm, I don't think that's true. Have I ever told you a skinny dipping no, story? No, I just feel like you're the type who would be like, let's go skinny dipping. And I would not be that type. To me, I'm like, eh, it sounds cold. You know what I, I don't mean? think that's something I've ever done. Yes, you have. Love, we have done that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, last one. Why do you have your guitar out? First just, of all? Well, it's not going to happen. We're not sk- singing. Singing is skinny done. Skinny dipping song? No skinny dipping songs. Last yeah. one. Who's more likely to visit a strip club? We've been to one together. We have. That's the only time I've ever been to one. Same for you? <laughs> <laughs> Is that the same for you? Only with me you've been to one? Uh, Yep. We have been to a strip club together. Yes, we but have. But it wasn't like we were like, let's go to a strip club. It was like we were just happened to go into one and we didn't even like the whole time. I just remember you were staring at me and mm-hmm. I was like, there's all these like pretty naked people and he's just looking at me. Mm-hmm. And I'm not even naked. And I was like, hmm. my mind. What the That's, heck? Be respectful. Uh, yeah, we were like sitting like in the back, sharing a chair. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cheek to cheek. Uh, butt Cl- cheek to butt cheek. Clothed, clothed che- cheek. Cheek to cheek. <laughs> anyway. <I'm okay>. um, <laughs> <laughs> and this next sponsor is going to love. We do have another we sponsor. We do have another by... sponsor. Um, this sponsor is great, guys, and it has nothing to do with what we were just talking about, but um, it is Busu. Busu is an award-winning app mm. that offers a fun and effective way to learn languages. Busu teaches 12 of the world's most popular languages, Spanish, French, English, Italian, German, Japanese, and so much more. As you follow Busu's language courses, you also get opportunities to practice practice with native speakers through the platform. This means you get constant feedback as you learn, which is so important to help you properly learn a language. Busu also comes with loads of smart features like a study plan to help keep you motivated and organized. You can start learning for free or choose to get a premium plan to unlock more fantastic features. I started recently using Busu. I'm still very new to it, Mm -hmm. but I feel already like I've retained so much more information than I ever did when I learned other languages in school. That information just went in one ear and out the other. I retained literally nothing. I took Spanish and German throughout school and I remembered nothing. And this is already so much better. I'm slow, but it's so much better than trying to learn it in school back in the day. So um, I really love it. And if you guys want to try it out, you can sign up to Busu for free by visiting busu.com slash relax. To supercharge your learning with Busu's special features, use code relax and get a 30% discount on Busu's premium packages. That's B-U-S-U-U dot com forward slash relax. Busu.com 
sport slash relax. Check it out and you can start learning a new language. It's super cool. It's amazing. Go check it out. So next, I'm going to go to more questions. We spent a lot of time on the who's more likely to fun thing, but that was fun for me. So um, let's go to some of the, I, there's a couple of questions that people sent in where they're, they made videos. Something that you both learned about each other during quarantine. I think if we can make it through this, like, yes, you're a little bit messier. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know. Well, uh, I think that's true. I, I feel like our relationship has gotten stronger because of the quarantine. And like, it does feel like we can get through anything, like anything, you know, um, like it rained today in LA and we got through that. It hailed love. It so hailed. Um, no, but truly like I, I've, I've never felt sick of you. I've never felt like I needed space from you. I've never felt like I wanted a break from you. I, even when we're like having one of our little tiffs, I'm like, I just want to be around him so we can solve it and then we can just cuddle again like is that not like the one thing i always say when we have a little tips i'm like can we just be okay now so we can just like cuddle like well then we are like the, yeah like, we it's are. never yeah. lasted more than like uh 24 hours mm -hmm. like any kind of and that's long but other than that what i've learned about you i feel like i it's not that i've learned it it's that it's uh, the things i've learned quote unquote about you during quarantine are just it has solidified things i already knew like i love learning every day how like i told you today i woke up and heard you and Flynn playing downstairs and I was like, he's such an incredible dad. It's like, I get to relearn things like that every day about you. Do you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. during quarantine, I've relearned, I knew before quarantine, you were a great dad, but in quarantine, I've seen every day how great of a dad you are, you know? So it's like, I get to relearn how awesome you are every day and it kind of solidifies things I already knew. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's not like I learned anything new about you. It's just like, I get to keep learning how cool you are. Do you know what I mean? Okay. What? I'm crying on a podcast. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah right that's really i really feel that way yeah, yeah, yeah. are you crying you're a pretty good mom too are yeah. you crying? no i'm not crying are yeah, you crying are you? your eyes are watering put your face in the camera you're you're crying because you're crying no it's just sweet your little eyes are watery no they're not you i got something in my eyes. nose your eyes are watering it's <laughs> making my thing. eyes watering oh my god i love you relax <laughs> you are crying oh my god no, i love you so I'm much not. you literally are you're so cute i'm um, not Okay, here's the next one. This is from uh, Melanie. Okay. What are your favorite date like restaurants to go to together? I thought this was a good one because it brings up an interesting topic, which is that Eric and I hate restaurants. Like we hate them. Oh, yeah. Like I don't really miss that from before quarantine. The second I sit down in a restaurant, I'm like, how do I, at what point are we leaving? Yeah, I remember. And I'm anticipating that. I remember going to a restaurant with not you. not a person who's relaxed in a restaurant. Um, before we started dating, I remember going to a, a restaurant with you. And so it was the first time I'd ever met someone else. Cause I've always been made fun of for like, just wanting to get out of a restaurant as fast as possible. Like if I'm with my family, I will leave the restaurant. Like if I'm done eating, I'll be like, I gotta go. I can't be in here. Yeah. I'm, and I'm not like it was an the first time I'd met someone like yeah. that. And I was like, oh, we both hate restaurants. I've never the met someone else who hates like restaurants. Dining. Yeah. No, I'm not like a, like an ambiance. No. Let's just sit. Let's like be in a restaurant for four never. hours. No talking. way. It's funny. So what's your favorite restaurant? Like we don't have one because we don't like going to them. All right. So now I'm going to go to some written questions, not um, vocal questions. You're not going to hear these people. This is my voice, not the Twitter person. Can you do asking. your, since you're so good at impressions, which mm -hmm. you've established. Can sure. You... I'll guess what their voice sounds like. Yeah. All right, so I think Ella would talk like this. If Eric was a YouTuber, what type of content do you think he would make? That's what I think Ella sounds like. And Eric would never do a YouTube channel, not in a million years. There's nothing you could do to make Eric start a YouTube channel ever. That's like the last on his list of jobs that he would ever do. But um, if he was forced to have a YouTube channel, my assumption is that it would be something that does not show his face and he doesn't have to talk or any, like it'd be like maybe a woodworking, like he'd show you yeah, his woodworking stuff. It. Like him, like re, what do you call it? Like re, refurbishing, um, refurbishing like, furniture. Like found, like, uh, like time lapses of refurbishing furniture. Yeah, like finding like old stuff on the side of the road and then like making it into something different right. and cool, but in the time lapse and like putting cool music over it, you know? Yeah, that's what I think you would do. No. Zombie Vader 12. Um, I don't know how this Zombie person. Vader? Zombie Vader. I thought this was a very interesting question because I don't remember the answer to it. The question is, how long did it take Eric to fart in front of you for the first time? I don't remember. Do you remember farting in front of me for the first time? I 
I, I don't feel like I'm continuously remember farting. Specifically, so. the date and time, which we've already established, but I do remember that, like, <laughs> and this is really funny, that, like, you um, didn't <laughs> fart in front of me for a long time. I know. And I mean, for so long that I, I had then, like, met all of your friends and family. Mm hmm. And somehow it would come up like, well, you know, <laughs> Colleen farts, right? Like, it was, it, I don't know. Like, how would it even come up? But it would always come up. And I'd be like, oh, I've never heard. The gasps. She, I've, like, Colleen's never farted in front of me. No. And your family and friends would be like, oh, yeah, Paul. What? They couldn't believe it. Shocked. Like, just shocked. Yeah. As if, like, you were only farts. Yeah. Like, well, I am. Um, and now I know. Yeah. yeah. Well, you are too, by the way. We, we farted uh, you, well, in unison kind of, the other day. You've kind of like awakened that in me. You kind oh, of like please, I cannot you, open your anus. Like you that have is a liberated my anus. <laughs> I episode title. Oh my god! Uh, I remember. <laughs> I just remembered something today. <laughs> today I was, <laughs> I was with Flynn, and I was walking up the stairs with Flynn to take him to do his nap. And we we're holding him. <laughs> hands so his his height You're crying again i know his height is right at like batak's level you know so it's like not a good level for fart towns but we're walking up the stairs and i i farted and Shocking. it was a, a loud one <laughs> and flynn knows what a fart is he calls it a two every time someone farts he goes oh, dad that tooted like he'll say ba even with himself baby, baby tooted, tooted yeah. so i fart and it was so insane that he goes oh no mommy poo pooed <laughs> yeah, was like, he was like he was like i can't even because he can identify so a toot it was so funny and oh, he's like hilarious. it was so funny but um i yeah i don't remember the first time but uh when the floodgates opened eric regretted ever asking me to to let the toot outs around you um it's, and it it's been one big fart since <laughs> for, oh my god for years since then Savannah asks, um, what's the number one thing you look forward to each day? That's wow. how she talks. Oh, that was sweet. Um, the number one thing I look forward to each day. Uh, well, you go first. Uh, coffee. Okay. That's cute. First. Mm -hmm. uh, then playing trucks. Mm -hmm. Taking a walk with Flynn, mm -hmm. which is generally like just me and him. We'll mm -hmm. do that in the mornings. I'm, now, I'm just going to go through my day. Yeah, is that okay? Yeah, she's not uh, asking about your day, re daily routine. She's just saying number one thing. Like for me. Dance party with you and him? Yeah, dance party's great. I like. Um, that's just, when we all dance together to truck songs. I think yeah, that's been it's, established. We do it every day. Um, Flynn loves a dance party. I really like, yeah, just moments with Flynn. But like I do genuinely love putting Flynn to sleep. He, we cuddle. I love that. And I love when he wakes up from his nap. And it's like I miss him while he's asleep. Um, so when he wakes up from his nap, I get really excited to like cuddle him for a minute and play with him. And he's just so funny right now. He's in such a cool time of toddlerhood where he's just hilarious. Like he's all, he's like a, he's like a, uh, struggling so comedian that's just trying out bits all the time on us. He's, and he's so funny. He's so, he's really funny. Speaking of Flynn guys, we have a truck of the day today. Surprisingly, before right before bedtime, Flynn was like, oh, truck of the day. He wanted to do it. So mm -hmm. we do have a truck of the day for you guys. Oh, it's a good one. It's, it's a, a very it's like, good one. Uh, maybe it's my favorite cute. truck of the day so far. So here is Flynn's truck, truck of, of the, the day. day. Flynn's truck of the day. Oh, truck of the day. Truck of the day. Flynn's truck, truck of the day. day. <laughs> oh, Flynn, do you have a truck of the day? This the Excavator. Excavator. The excavator. What does an excavator do? Scoop down dirt. Scoops the dirt. Mm-hmm. What color is the excavator? It's brown. Brown, yes. How many tires does it have? Can you count them? One. One. Two. Two. Three. Four. Five. Five. Six. Six. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you saw a big pile of dirt, what would you do? Scoop mud. You'd scoop, scoop mud. The mud. Uh -huh. Yeah. Where would you dump it? There. There? Yeah. That's a good place. Uh, what sound does the excavator make? Scoop, dump. Scoop and dump. That's right. Can you go beep, beep? Beep, 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 beep. Is there any songs about excavators? Yeah. Let's hear it. Excavator. Excavator dumps. Ooh, that's a beautiful Ooh, song. Look at those lyrics. 
Excavator dumps, guys. Does it go dump, 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 dump. Dump, 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 dump. Scoop, 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 scoop. Scoop, scoop. You guys scatting? Dump, dump, da, da, dump. Da, 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 dump. And it dump, dump, dumps the dirt. Dumps the dirt. <laughs> and it scoop, scoop, scoops it up. Scoop, scoop it up. Push the button. Oh, and it pushes the button. <laughs> Thank you for listening to... Truck of the Day. Yeah. Wow. Wow. A snowplow? I thought it was an excavator. What the heck? Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Clint's Truck of the Day. <laughs> Good old truck of the day. It was a good one today. Good old whole song. I know he's a whole amazing. New truck of the day Glenn song. Is so amazing. I love him so much. Um, guys, it is time for the next ad, and it's one that is um, a hot topic in this house, especially today. It is uh-huh. Brooke Linen. Life is too short to sleep between anything less than really nice sheets. But maybe you looked at some retailers and calculated the years of interest you pay on just one set and gave up. Trust me, go check out Brooklinen. So Brooklinen was started by Rich and Vicky, who also tried to find beautiful home essentials that didn't cost an arm and a leg. And when they couldn't, they founded Brooklinen as the first direct-to-consumer bedding company. They work directly with the manufacturers to make luxury available directly to you without the luxury level markups. Brooklinen has a variety of sheets, colors, patterns, and materials to fit your needs and tastes. Brooklinen has over 50,000 five-star reviews and counting. They are so confident you will love their products. They even offer a 365 day money back guarantee and brooklinen is so much more than sheets they've got comforters pillows towels even loungewear and more we love our brooklinen sheets for real y'all like so much to the point like we both think they're incredible to the point where today eric ordered more i did like they they had they'd sent us they were kind enough to gift us uh, a sheet set and then when they came on uh, graciously as a sponsor of this podcast, but you didn't like the color. Well, I know I liked the color, but we we got we're getting a new bed, and I don't think it'll mesh well with the bed. So our new bed is coming this weekend, and I was like, I think we need some cream sheets. And Eric was oh, like, Oh, we need some cream sheets. Yeah. Oh, come on. <laughs> what? Um, and so Eric was like, Oh, I know, I know what we got to do. We got to get more Brooklyn well, sheets. Yeah. So I just I went on there and I used our. Did I tell you I used our code? Oh my god. And gosh. then the next question prompt was like, From what podcast? And I was like. Uh, relax. <laughs> you got a sweet deal too and you guys can too go to brooklinen.com and use promo code relax to get $25 off when you spend $100 or more plus free shipping that's b-r-o-o-k-l-i-n-e-n.com and enter promo code relax to get $25 off when you spend $100 or more plus free shipping truly we actually are obsessed with these sheets like did we, we could say have, that the color was cream or did we just start yelling cream sheets the color in the we chose was cream ah, okay. uh, we also have the dark blue which is beautiful um but with our new bed i was like let's get new sheets and eric now he's like i will never try anything else other than brooklyn like he's we both love them but eric's like will not try any other sheets now he loves them so much not a point. so uh brooklinen.com go check it out use promo code relax at checkout um so we do have lots more fun questions I feel like this is a very long episode, um, but maybe I'm wrong. I love this question. What day is it? I don't know, but I'm really excited to hear your answer. Casey, who Hi, has Casey. a terrified looking hamster as her profile picture, said... They bite. So I'm going to guess what she would sound like and tell me if I'm wrong, okay? What was Eric's process in preparing to propose? <laughs> <laughs> That's how I think that person would talk. See how good you are at impressions? <laughs> so, this is a gift. And the fact that you so don't share with this with the world... It's not an I'm just making a stupid voice. Anyway, what was your process preparing to propose? I think that's a really good question. Uh, it was a lot. It was. It, uh, do you want me to actually tell it? Yeah. Um. It was a lot. There was. Uh. There was like a. a my mother had a had a ring that had three diamonds in it that was passed down to her that she had been saving for her three sons that they could each have one of those you know little diamonds mm-hmm. like to and uh for when they wanted to propose to someone so i had called my mom and was like i'm gonna propose and oh I my need, gosh. I need, give me that rock it was like a, a family um heirloom that had been uh 
passed down for generations um, mm-hmm. from Ireland mm-hmm. was was the woman who first had Which this. Which is where As we got she had engaged. First, the, the ring that was passed down to my mom was an engagement ring from one of my relatives. And then it was okay, like, well, I, I can't just propose with this like small little thing in wax paper and a plastic bag and a in a velvet bag. And the reason is because he wanted to design the ring together. Like he didn't want to just like design a ring. Yeah. Well, I wanted you to want, cause you have particular tastes sometimes when it comes to things. Mm-hmm. Um, so I just thought like that might be something you would want to be a part of. Like mm-hmm. I thought that'd be cool. I love that. Uh, for you to like design your own mm-hmm. ring with this stone that was like this generations back right. family heirloom. And then, but I also didn't want to give you nothing. So like, I also bought like a, kind of placeholder uh, ring thing. I talked to your parents. Mm-hmm. Uh, I talked, I called Rachel. Uh, and then I talked to Corey and mm-hmm. your tour manager about it. Like you happened to be going on tour and, mm-hmm. and was like, I wanted to do it in Ireland. Mm-hmm. Um, and I had like pictures of my relative, like from Ireland who had been wearing the, the mm-hmm. ring with that stone and uh, mm-hmm. and yeah. Is that how far yeah. am I going with this? I don't know. However far you want to go is up yeah. To you. And so it was like a this whole. It was awesome. It was there was beautiful. so much. Th- what was the original question? It was what was Eric's process in preparing to propose? Yeah, lots of like I would say vomiting and, and diarrhea. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, moving on. Um, your thoughts on potatoes? I'm cautious about this one. So because am I supposed to say in which way I? prefer it just potatoes says, to be it just prepared says your thoughts on potatoes i don't want this to be a whole nother ranch no, thing just, when you like say i do this thoughts. wrong uh potatoes amazing love them in almost every form give me a potato pancake mm-hmm. hash browns mm-hmm. baked potato mm-hmm. uh your roasted potatoes that you mm, do like those like are good. throw some rosemary on there yeah. salt and pepper like you cannot do potato in a way that would offend me me too i agree with that i love potatoes any form actually that's not true mashed I didn't even I didn't even bring up mashed. Mashed potatoes are amazing. You know what I don't like is when people say they have breakfast potatoes and then it's just like soggy like chunks of potatoes with skin on them. Like get out of here. That's the only way I hate potatoes. Well, that's just yeah. No, that's offensive. No, no soggy breakfast. Yeah, get out of here. Like and they just put like lots of bell peppers in them. Oh, get out so of here! Like soggy, onion chunks, onion chunks, and bell pepper chunks, and like soggy like Never. breakfast potatoes. No, just soggy potatoes. Get so, out of here. We're just used to everything being. Uh, so we haven't been to a restaurant, so it's like delivered, so it's even worse. Oh, so bad. Okay, this one's really important. Um, Anthony Garza. It's more important than potatoes. This. Anthony Garza wants to know, do you wipe standing up or sitting down? Lovey. Why did you? Because uh, I don't know the answer to this okay. question for you, and I'm like scared of your you answer. You just Oprah Winfrey me, all right? Well, like, for real, is... tell me, because I'm like actually nervous about whatever your answer is going to be. Why? Well, you answer the question first, and then I'll feel comfortable. I wipe. This is not something I'm not going like, to talk about. Like You're not going to say your answer? Well. I wipe sitting down. What? Yeah. Okay, good. Thank God. I love you so much. We're in love. <laughs> Who stands up? I feel like it's so, it's not good because it's like, when you're sitting, it like makes everything available to wipe. When you stand up, the cheekies clinch back up because like you know your cheeks fall back together when you when you stand up so it's like you can't even get it all out you know what i'm saying you have to wipe sitting down right what is this the content is this is this what we wanted our podcast to be i i don't know what i wanted it to be but i know just talking about how we wipe our you haven't actually said no right now is that what our podcast is now (laughs) am i quitting Right now, the podcast is me talking about wiping my butt because you're not saying anything. Yeah, I, I think that oh. I'm, I I think that... You're the worst. This is not what I signed up for. Okay. All right. How about, oh, there's so many freaking questions that I loved. Um, your haters back off experience slash Eric's perspective on the show. A lot of haters back off questions too, um, which we will get to all of those very soon. But I did love the question your perspective on the show what do you mean we'll get uh, like maybe i can bring this up now okay or maybe you're like okay won't let me but like i thought it'd be really fun for this podcast to mm-hmm. like take it episode by episode of time yeah. and like hear all your behind the scenes stories and, yeah and then they could also hear my perspective which is because we, we had want- never met before mm-hmm. we had never met before mm-hmm. like i just auditioned for your show and this is how we you know what i mean like i thought that'd be really fun yeah but you have can i say yeah go for it you've expressed to me that 
Mm -hmm. they, like um, uh, I don't know, how do we how do I phrase this? Like well, it's it's like it would be too hard for you mm -hmm. to watch it, uh, which to me, like, and again, like, it's just my I don't understand because yeah. like, I th think it's insane to have developed a TV show, to have sold it, to have the pilot made, to have the pilot get picked up straight to series mm -hmm. by a network like Netflix to get two seasons. I feel like that's like winning the gold medal in the Olympics. Like, uh, you know, it's yeah. just insane. It's like winning the lottery multiple times. Yeah, it's crazy. I can't believe um, it happened. Um, so let's do this. It's our 10th episode. How do you feel about next week will be, will be the first, we'll, we'll talk about the first episode of Haters Back Off. How do you feel about that? I just don't think that you have. I wonder if people think we're like faking this. Uh, I just, no, we're I just not don't. This. I don't think. I don't think don't you wait. would actually. I'll do it. I'll do you'll it. You'll sit with me and watch it. Yeah, I'll sit with you and I'll watch the first episode of Haters Back Off with you. And next week we'll talk about. We'll go through episode by episode. Maybe we won't do it every single week. We'll see how first episode goes. I'll explain this in a second. But everyone, this week. Watch episode one of Haters Back Off on Netflix. Oh, I wonder if haters will be trending again. On it won't. Um, and next week, <laughs> yeah. and next week um, for the episode, we will talk about um, everything regarding the first episode of the first season of Haters Back Off, and maybe you know, really in some of the episodes, idea. maybe some of the episodes we can call my brother who co-created it with me. We can call Angela who um, played our mom. You know, we can call the cast members and talk to them, and I can tell my experience as you know the creator and producer and writer and and you know starring in this show it was the craziest experience of my life but yes we we talked about this before the podcast started we were like let's do she's this also thing. said no to me multiple, multiple times, times since then of the idea of doing this because haters back off was one of the best experiences of my life and one of the best accomplishments of my life like um i really love that show and it was really 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 special to me because it was my baby. Like I had created this world of people in my head over a decade. And then I finally got to meet them. It was the most bizarre, surreal, magical experience to have this character of Miranda, who's an idiot and stupid. And, you know, people are used to seeing just five minute videos of me doing dumb things every week. But for me, this is a girl that I have created in my mind who is so developed, like, I know what she's thinking or about to say at any second. Obviously, it's me and I've created it. So that makes sense. But like truly, this girl is like, I know everything about this girl, Miranda. I've been doing Miranda for 13 years, I think. So I it was a very, very surreal and exciting experience to go, OK, I know her uncle. I know her mom. I know her dad. I know her love interests. I know all these characters and we write them and develop them and create them for so, so many years. And then finally we got other writers on board and we got producers on board and then we got Netflix on board and then we cast actors and then we were in Vancouver shooting the show and I watched over a decade this magical made up imaginary world in my brain, it came to life and it was so surreal and so exciting, but it also, because it was such a huge part of my life, you know, over a third of my life was spent creating this world. When it ended, it didn't feel like, oh, how disappointing my show ended. It felt like people that I knew died. Like, and so it feels like, and I know it sounds very dramatic, but it really did feel like I had to mourn the loss of Miranda's mom and Miranda's uncle and Patrick. Like I'm emotional now, like I'm choked up. Like it really felt that way. So even though it sounds to I know I sound totally nuts and I sound like just totally insane. It was like I worked for a decade on these characters and then I had to say goodbye to them abruptly and didn't get to have like a proper goodbye with these people in this experience. That was the best experience of my life. So it's I haven't watched the show since season two came out. I have not watched a single episode of Haters Back Off. Yeah, I can't I think even that's like. That's another thing people don't understand. It's like you, well, yeah, you haven't watched it in no. years. And if ever, like since like you were done in the editing room. Right. And then it came. I don't think you even watched it when it came no, out. I, I think didn't. the last time you, the last time to me, I think you would have ever seen any frame of Haters would have been sitting in the editing room in Vancouver after season two had wrapped. Mm hmm. So for me, four years ago, I don't know how ago? long those, but every time I see a photo from haters back off or pictures from haters back off or like on Netflix, I go on Netflix and like, I'll see the thumbnail of it. 
Um, there's also there's multiple pictures of it behind you, by the way. Well, yeah, not that, but like I'm if like if a video pops up on my Twitter feed of like yeah. someone, like I I have to scroll past it quickly or I'll cry. Like I, it was such a, and it was such a big, not just in I mean this is such a longer discussion, but like in my career it was so such an incredible beautiful experience um but also in my personal life like i feel like me as a human being i like became like who i am and i just like i learned so much about myself in that experience and i grew so much in that experience and i am so proud of myself for that whole experience and so like that time frame is very triggering it's like very bizarre so the thought of watching it is like, it scares me a little, I think. Oh, well, I think you should be so proud of it. And I, I am proud and of just, it. You know, as an actor looking back on it, it's the job that I'm most proud of. And I think it's the best show that I've ever been on. Um, I but, am so proud of it. Yeah, but it, it would, it, I th- and I think a lot of people like it and it's, it's there on this great platform like Netflix. So it'll, it's just always there and you can always go and watch it if you want to. And I would like to go back and it's been a long time for me too. Right. And, um, it's like, even just you, like you bringing up now, like you even pitching the idea, it's not like it's the, those stories are so uh-huh. fascinating. The, the, the other networks that almost had it and mm-hmm. all that stuff. Like there's a lot of, uh, yeah, it was I don't know, it's a really crazy cool, it's a really cool thing that doesn't, yeah, that, that, that doesn't happen often or if ever. Um, yeah, it's a really wild experience to like the amount of work that went into. I think a lot of people think that Netflix just called me and was like, do you want to do a show? And it wasn't it was a very long process. I worked so hard for so many years, pitched it to so many different people with my brother. And so many people said no and slammed doors in our faces, made me feel like garbage. Like we pitched it everywhere and worked so hard on it and finally um people started biting and wanting to be a part of it and and started seeing the beauty in the project and believed in it and so it was like all these years of working hard and like just climbing this ladder and doing everything i could to make it happen and then it was happening and it was so exciting and so much work and i never slept but i loved it so much i didn't care and then and just ended and it was like such an abrupt ending that yeah. it was really jarring. It was it was really, and I don't feel like- Yeah, because my perspective, because it wasn't like that, uh, this like thing that I, cre- you know, I just was a part of, but like I'm used to like becoming a, like a part of something and being so invested in it and then it's just ending. Like, so it was like, like almost uh, like, like super awful, like in this circumstance, but like I was, was used to that as in all acting jobs, they're terminal. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like I'm, I was very aware of that idea and that that could happen but it obviously like to you it's it was a I just very don't think I prepped experience. my mind for that I just yeah. uh, my goal was always just to make it happen so I'd never thought about the fact that it would end and so I wasn't ready for that and I feel like I'm still not ready for that like I still feel like I'm still like I yeah and there's also I mean this is such a deeper longer conversation and we'll end it after this but um I feel like there's also an element to it where I'm like I loved that so much and it was such a wonderful experience and I'm so proud of the show. Um, you should be. The, I, the watching it, I'm, I'm not the type of person who lives in the future or in the past. I'm very much in the moment type of person. And that's how my career is too. I've always feel like I've been in the moment type of person and I'm so afraid of watching it and, and comparing my life to that time. Do you know what I'm saying? Cause that was such a wonderful experience and I was so proud of that experience that I'm like, I don't want to watch it and be like, I'm never going to have that again. Or like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, are. I'm so afraid of that because I want to experience that again. And I feel like I've, I've been waiting to watch it and revel in it and be proud of it for like when I have the next TV show or movie. And then I was like, once I have another TV show or another movie, then I'll be like, oh, here's another one. I can watch that now. I'm proud of that. It's another. It's an amazing success. And you, like, and you should just like eat the cake and not wait till your next birthday to eat the cake from the previous birthday. I'm really good at metaphors. Yeah, that was a good uh, one. <laughs> anyway, no, but what's the next ask? The Just point <laughs> is, the point is, um, I am proud of the show. I love the show so much. It's uh very deep to me on so many levels because it's not just like I wrote made up characters for a TV show. Like Miranda is a huge part of my life. I still do Miranda almost every single day. And 
it's my career and has been for over a decade, like a third of my life. I've been this character. I, I was so, there's I'm going to so, be a reboot. There's so many, reboots there's not going to be a reboot. Days. Trust me, but I, I'm so grateful and I'm not, this is not me being like, Oh, I'm so upset with Netflix. I'm so grateful to Netflix. I loved working with them. Nothing they could, even if they did me dirty today, like if Netflix did something horrible to me, which they have not, but even if Netflix today called me and were like, we hate you, like, which they, obviously, why would they do that? I still would be like, sure, they hate me, but like, that was still a wonderful experience. Like, I'm not saying that for any reason other than it's the truth. Like, I loved working with them. And I'm so incredibly grateful that they gave me a chance and let no me do one, two yeah, seasons. No, I don't think anyone heard like, anything you were saying as an attack on... Well, yeah, I don't want people to think like, oh, she's so sad. And it like, well, it's like it. This is what happens in TV. And the fact that I got one season and two, like, it's crazy. It's I'm crazy. so lucky. Yeah, but, but it's so, so lucky. It's so personal. It's personal. It's so personal to you. Yeah. Uh, and the whole thing so that because TV shows do end, you know yeah. what I mean? And I feel like that's always uh, an, an emotional experience for everyone involved for for someone who's created this TV show and starred in it and written it. Well, and how personal it was to me in and my it's life. from a character that they've experienced for a decade. It's, it's obviously is, a very different... And is based on my life and is based on my yeah. human experiences. So for everyone can't else... Ima- can't imagine. The show ends and then they go on to a new TV show. And it's like, oh, that sucks. But let's move on to this new TV show. I... I was like, to me, it was like your dog dies and everyone's like, well, just get a new dog. I'm like, what do no, I can't? I like, this was just, my life. You know like, what it just reminded me of? What? Is the ending. Of the, so we just watched the Truman Show, like not mm-hmm. that long, like a month ago, we watched the Truman Show, which is like a, such a, great a movie. like a, literally a perfect movie. Mm-hmm. And the end of Truman Show, he like walks through the thing and it's like, it's this big dramatic moment. He's finally, I'm spoiler alert mm-hmm. for anyone who's never <laughs> seen Truman Show. Um, he's leaving. Good night. Good afternoon. If I don't see mm-hmm. you, yeah, whatever. Uh, and he walks out the door, and then at the very end of that movie, it cuts to the two guys that are security guards in a parking lot watching the Truman Show, and they go, "Yeah, what else is on?" And they just mm-hmm. flip the channel, like it, like it was. It's his life. It's this. It's mm-hmm. this thing. But at the end of it, he was just like, "Yeah, what's playing next? Mm-hmm. What is Netflix auto playing into next?" You know what mm-hmm. I mean? But to you, it was like it was. It was my it, life. It was your Truman Show almost. It was my life, and so yeah, it doesn't feel like like sure I could write a new TV show, I could write a, a movie, which I have written other TV shows and movies with my brother. Um, obviously, I haven't had them made, but like none of them feel like this. Like even if I get to make like the funniest, best movie and I'm so proud of it or TV show and I'm so freaking proud of it. It's like my everything and I love it. It's my favorite project. It will not feel like this. This was a part of me. Do you know what I mean? Like there's I know, nothing but I, I can do I believe in your talent that. and I feel like the next one you'll say the same thing no, about. No, it's, it's Cause different. Because like it's it, different. it exists because you are that talent as like a creator no of character, things. No character I could create will have been a part of my life for I, this I much. Will la- will... I will lay down a hundred dollar bill or whatever right now i will lay it down right now like you'll look back on like this conversation and you'll be like oh that's so funny that i didn't think i'd ever do like another thing like that it's not that i don't think i will i think i'll do lots of other great projects it's that none i know none of them will feel the way that this one did i'm gonna cry like it it was so personal so it's hard for me. So like we've been talking about rewatching it and I'm like, oh, I don't know if I can, but I'm going we to. You don't have to if you don't want. <laughs> I do want to. I do. I know it'll be fun. I promise it'll be fun. I won't just cry. I'll be fine. <laughs> it should be. It should be. It'll be really fun. It it'll be, be funny. We'll have lots of funny stories. It, it will be, be great. It will be great. I'm just, I'm just emotional. Oh, I'm emotional about it. So, but it'll be great. It'll, will so everyone watch Haters Back Off season one, episode one. I love how the question before this was do you wipe <laughs> standing up or sitting down and then it's gone yeah. into a half hour monologue about like i know your existence like the emotional core of your ex- yeah, i don't know i like, know i well, know i can't i don't think i'll ever be able to this podcast i don't think i'll ever be able to really express like why it makes me so emotional but like it really does so anyway um this was a really fun podcast for us it was long but we just like kind of wanted to listen to what you guys wanted to hear us talk about and answer your questions and just kind of hang out. And it was really fun for us. So thank you. Thanks for, I forgot we were doing a podcast. I know. Um, 
which kind of was the point of the podcast when we wanted to make it. But we love you guys. Yeah. Thank you for watching. Thanks to our sponsors. And thanks to uh, TJ and Tony. Yeah. Six and oh, gosh. Four. And thank you to everyone who's been sending Boost in to to their versions of our theme song. And we're going to end with someone's incredible version of we're our theme song. We don't want to do the Erica's Sexy song again? No, we're going to do a, a version of our theme song. Thank you all so much for listening. We love you so much. And we'll see you next week on Relax. And we're going to talk about Haters Back Off. And I'm probably going to cry the whole time, I guess. Are we actually going to do that? Or just... <laughs> no, we're going to do it. But I won't cry. I promise. I got it out today. I'm fine. Um, who's uh, doing the uh, theme song? song this week well you're just gonna have to watch and see hit it okay here we are again another cover for colleen and eric this week we're doing reggae i'm just feeling it guys reggae right here right now The world is scary and we're locked in our home But now we have big microphones So you can relax, that's the name of our podcast